Do you struggle with finding the perfect home decor that you're looking for? That is definitely what used to be me. Decorating my home used to bring me stress and anxiety until I discovered two secrets that have helped me grow a love and passion for home decor, thrifting and painting. Hi, I'm Natalie with Sparks of Joy Studio. And in today's video, we have a variety of paint techniques and different paint colors that we'll be using to upcycle a bunch of thrifted finds. Let's get started. I love the style of these ceramic vases, but when I look at some of the prices that I find, especially at my favorite website on Amazon, I just can't justify spending that kind of money. So I have found a variety of vases that we will be using a paint technique to create a similar look. I found this vase at Goodwill uh, for about maybe $5 or so. And I'm going to start by painting it in, I believe this is Cashmere by Fusion. I can't remember the color because I have changed it several times since I started this project. As you can see here, this has now been spray painted with a gloss, a high gloss spray paint. And then I sprayed on a texture additive that is also a spray paint, but it adds on that kind of speckled look. But I've now decided to change it up. So I am taking the color Silhouette, which is a milk paint by Fusion, and I'm going to paint the entire piece. The best part about it is that there's already some texture because of that speckled spray paint that I had on it. Now that that's dry, I'm going to be taking a few colors from Fusion Mineral Paint. These are the all-in-one paints. I've chosen Chateau, Eucalyptus, and Algonquin. I will say that I also added in Woodwick while I was working on these projects. I'm taking a small sponge and I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on there and start by dabbing very gently on the vase in different random places. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just getting myself started. This is the first of the vases that I did and you'll see as you see me do some of the other vases, I get a little bit more confident and it goes much faster. But um, as I go through, I even tried this fan brush to see if that would create a different effect. It ended up being simple enough to just use two to three different um, sponges and sponge it on um, in random order and mixing them as the paint was still wet because that allowed the paint to blend but not be too integrated um, with each other so that it ended up as just a solid mess. I just wanted to stop to give you a quick look at what it looked like before and what it looks like now with that kind of textured effect. Here's another picture that I had previously painted in coal black and had then painted it in all white um, for a previous video that I had done. Um, now I'm coming in and I am painting it in I believe this is casement by fusion I'm just giving it a quick coat it is slightly lighter than the cottage white which is a folk art paint that was on there um, from before now I'm going to be coming in with those same three colors and I am going to be creating a similar effect I do want this picture to be lighter than what you saw in the previous vase, so I am not using Woodwick in this um, on this picture. Mm -hmm. 
One thing I've learned with this method of painting is that just when you think you've ruined everything and you've messed up your project, it starts coming together and it's exactly what you want. So just trust the process. I know you guys have heard other creators say the same thing, but I absolutely agree. Trust the process and just keep moving forward because at this point, I probably would have stopped everything and just repainted it because that's what I typically do. Um, I'm trying really hard to learn to like follow through and finish up projects that I start or ideas that I've had and, and seeing them come full circle. And here's the next face with the same three colors. Again, I'm just trying to play with the um, the colors that I use or how much I use of each color, um, not necessarily changing the colors that I choose for the three because I do want them to coordinate in some way. Another thing I'm really working on is um, learning how to create vignettes and because I tend to make a lot of pieces that I really like, but they don't go together. So I'm trying to figure out ways to do more of that, figure out ways to coordinate. So um, let's finish this up and look at some of these final projects. There are a few more that I did that are off camera and you'll get to see those in the final reveal. For this ceramic cup, I started by painting it in conservatory, and now I'm coming in with a custom blend of a variety of fusion paints that created this brownish purple. I will leave a link or a list of those paints in the description box below. I followed up with Silhouette, that milk paint that I used by Fusion, on one of the earlier vases that you saw. I let it dry after putting on two coats and now I'm sealing it up with a polyacrylic sealer. I ended up putting a stamp on top of this. I used one of the antiquity stamps. I'm sorry I don't have that captured in this video, but here's a look at the finished project. This pink vase I had found at the Goodwill outlet. I was very impressed that it had not been chipped or uh, cracked in any way. My mom, when she saw it, said, I love the vase. I do not like that color. Well, the wonderful thing about paint, you can turn anything that you like the shape of or the look of to the color that you want. So here is Heirloom by Fusion. I also have this uh, container. It was like a money jar with the cork top that used to be really popular. I had sprayed it in a creamy white and now I'm coming in with Putty by Fusion. I wanted to give it a little bit more of a primitive look, I guess. And I'm just, again, painting it very simply with two coats of paint and then we'll put a quick stamp on it and we're gonna take a look at those two vases together. I also used that putty color from Fusion on this rustic wooden tote that I had gotten from Upcycled by Brie um, at her website. And I'd previously painted it in Oakum by Fusion and now I'm coming in with that color putty which I will be covering around the sides and the bottom of the bin. I'm going to leave the inside of the bin that same brown that you see here. Once it was dry, I gave it a light sanding, and here's a look at what it looks like once that sanding was done. And here's a look at the finished project styled in my home. For next project, I have this wooden cat I don't know what it is what is it a napkin holder is it I'm not sure maybe it's a, to hold books in between but I had an idea for this that is for my daughter because she loves cats and I will not get her a real one so I'm happy to give her as many fake cats as I can I'm gonna start by unscrewing all the parts to this um, so that we can 
paint it and then upcycle it and repurpose it a little bit. I'm planning on turning this into a tote. I'm going to be using the color Lavande, which is a fusion milk paint. And it actually came to me in the Colors of the Month Club by Julie um, at Julie's Designs and Signs. I definitely recommend um, that Colors of the Month Club. I've been a member of it for about a year and just recently switched over to the uh, club that includes the milk paint. And it's the best way to try new colors, you guys. Uh, I love fusion paint, so this is allows me to try things out. I get a really good price and uh, I can choose what I want to get in the bigger pint size um, paints. Anyway, we mixed up that paint with one part milk paint to one part water, let it sit for a few minutes and now I'm going to be covering the entire piece. So that base as well as the front of the cat and the tail of the cat or the back of the cat in that color. I'm going to do the front, the sides, and the back of each of these pieces. While the paint's still wet, I do come in with my heat gun and I run it over all of the paint and this creates that crackled effect. It sometimes will chip off some of the paint. Um, really, milk paint is very unpredictable, so I love to see what becomes of the paint every time I paint it on a different surface. I painted on two coats of that milk paint and let it dry thoroughly and now I'm coming in and just sanding the edges on all parts of this project. Next I'm going to be sealing up the paint and I'm going to be using Big Top by DIY. You can use any poly acrylic sealer, it just happens to be the one that I have on hand and I'm trying to use the little, last little bits of it up. Now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to create the sides of this wooden tote that I want to create. I have these pieces of scrap that I got and I think they were from Home Depot about a year ago. And I was trying to measure out how long they would need to be. My husband comes along and he goes, oh, why don't you cut it into strips so that it looks, you know, the same way some of the other totes you have look. And I was like, oh, love that idea. Can you go ahead and cut that for me? So uh, I measured it up and he cut it for me so that I could put it on the box. These strips are about two inches wide. Um, I actually don't know how long they are. I'm sorry. I started by painting it with that rose water mixture that I have that's been lightened with some white paint, but I realized that I wanted to put this in my daughter's room and I wanted it to match with some of the decor that I created for her a few weeks back. If you remember, I created that um, nightstand. I want it to match that. So I stopped this, let it dry, and I came back in with the color Mist by Fusion. I also cut a spindle the size of the tote so that I could use this as the handle and painted it in that same color Mist by Fusion. Now I'm coming in and brad nailing the handles on each side. This is a new master brad nailer. I have not had success with any of the other more popular brands like DeWalt or Ryobi. I bought both and I had to return them because they basically didn't work after the first uh, use. So this one I've been using for a few weeks now and it's been amazing. So I definitely like this Brad nailer and it was less expensive. This is the battery operated one, but I also have the corded one and both of them have been great. The only difference, um, or I guess the only downside would be that the Ryobi and the DeWalt uh, Brad nailers do um, allow for longer um, brad nails. This one I think only goes up to a, an inch and a quarter. I'll leave a link in the description box below. I did get it on Amazon. I also needed to figure out a way to hide the hole that was on the front of that cat um, in 
and so I have this Longenberger basket that I had gotten um, from the Goodwill outlet. You can see that there it was probably chewed up by a dog or something on that spot. So I didn't really want to paint it, but I do need to hide that space. So I took this lace, also found at the Goodwill outlet bins, and I'm just going to cover it um, completely all the way around, almost creating like a skirt on the basket. I put a screw right above where that circle is on the front of the cat and here's a look at our finished project. For our last project today, I have this long wooden candlestick that I have had for a while and I didn't like the fact that it wasn't straight up and down. It kind of leaned to the side a bit. So I'm actually going to turn it into something different. As you can see, I cut this up into four, I think it was actually five different pieces, but I didn't use the last one in this project. I am, oh, there it is. Um, I am going to start by painting them all in the same color. I initially tried um, Blue Pine by Fusion, which you see in the top left, but I actually decided on Woodwick by Fusion. I think I like the color of that uh, woodish brown color better so I ended up painting everything in that color. I also added in this other piece of scrap that I had in my stash. I wanted to add it in because I am going to be using succulents with all of these and I liked that there was a hole on the side of this piece. Now I'm coming in with my drill. This is the Ryobi drill um, that I do actually really love. Uh, this one works really well for me. I am drilling holes in the tops of all of the pieces and then on that bigger piece that was the base of the candlestick, I'm actually going to be drilling holes not only on the top but on the sides right where that curve starts. I purchased a few sets of these succulents. They came in packs of 12 and now I'm just figuring out um, how to position them on each of the little mini vases I guess that we've created. I did have to use my wire clippers to cut the um, stems of the succulents so that they would fit into the holes as close as possible so that the actual succulent piece comes right out from the hole rather than having a stem underneath. I finished this off by covering everything with some white wax, letting it sit, and then wiping off the excess. Probably should have done this before I put the succulents in, but it's okay. Um, I Once I finished that up, we were done with this project, and I'm in love with how these turned out. The excitement of thrifting paired with my joy for painting has given me the motivation to really create my perfect home. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.